Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Knitting with Me, Nancy. And I'm here at the Stitching Post. <laughs> Val thought that was very funny. Uh, but we're here at the Stitching Post in Sisters, Oregon, and I'm glad you're tuning in and watching. Um, we want to showcase our newest yarn that has just come in, although we have new yarn coming in now all the time. Wait till you see in the next months um, what's up. It's going to be a surprise. But today is tiramisu. It's a new Barocco yarn. It is a worsted weight. It is beautiful. It is 38% wool, 28% acrylic, 23% mohair, and 11% silk. So it's got a little bit of everything. It's four and a half to five stitches per inch on a US seven to eight. So a true worsted weight. The colors are spectacular. Um, this is the sample. I also want to showcase the book after we do the colors because um, the book is really nice. Of course, they sent us our sample by mistake in the wrong color. It should have been in the blue. Um, but I do want to show you this cover sweater, two patterns in this book. And again, it's book number 418, Tiramisu. Um, but if you can, Val's going to show you, this is a really cool sweater. And I've seen similar ones in fingering weight. This is actually connected here. And I like how they, the back here is done from side to side as well. The whole sweater is. So it's all done in one piece and grafted, I believe, together. And I like it because it's extremely flattering. Um, on a number of people because you can make it longer as well, just adding on more. Um, the other pattern is a poncho. And we know we love our ponchos and we're coming into fall season. So this is a great yarn to think about for fall. Um, it is light and airy. It weighs like nothing, which I really like. Um, I like yarns that are late, but uh, light, late. Um, so you get, it's very soft. You get 137 yards for $13. So it's a really nice price point. And it looks, because it's stranded yarn, you have the silk mohair as connected with it. So it's putting two yarns together so you don't have to hold them together. They're already there which is kind of a cool thing to do. Um, if I open this strand up, you can see if Val can get close enough, I'm not sure, mm -hmm. that it has two strands and they're different colors and they blend throughout. So it's just a really pretty yarn. Mm -hmm. I took my favorite color, of course, the fall colors. Um, yes, this is Val's favorite color is the blues. She's an indigo girl. Yes, she's going, oh, it's so good, it's so good. We're gonna get her knitting again in her spare time like she has any, none. So one of the things I wanted to talk about, I had a customer today or yesterday who's doing sleeves and they have to be in the round. And she's like, well, how can I do this in the round where I won't go crazy? And so I wanted to talk about doing projects in the round, whether it be a cowl coming up to the fall, which you could use tiramisu to think about how pretty that would be as a cowl. Um, you could use as a, in the round for a full sweater, um, sleeves, anything you can think of. For me, Fair Isle. So I started two different, I'm going to show you two or three different ways to do a round. And the first is how do we join in the round? So I want to pull up for a normal hat that we use a 16 inch circular needle. I am on worsted weight yarn. Now a lot of times what happens when we go to do something in the round, we cast on however many stitches and join and then we notice there's a twist of one inch up, which will never come undone. So for me, the way I avoid that is I cast on however many stitches 
And depending on your pattern, whatever row one is in pattern is what I do. So if it's a rib, I'll do a one by one or two by two rib. If it's straight knitting, I'll do straight knitting. So for this hat, I cast on, I believe there's 90 stitches here. And I added one extra stitch. So I'm just gonna let it hang here for a second. And why did I do that? This is how I join in the round. And there are many ways. I don't believe there's a right or a wrong. I found this to be the easiest. And the reason why I like this is if you just start knitting in the round, you're stacking your yarn. The way I do it, because my, I'm gonna butt two ends together, I'm actually butting my yarn together. Um, so I, for me, then I'm doing individual rows, which means I'm stepping up as opposed to spiraling up. Mm -hmm. um, so I knit, I cast on 90 stitches, or 91, beg your pardon, and I added one extra stitch, and then I knit. And so what it looked like, I knit all the way up to that last stitch. And if you notice, it's all kinky. So I'm gonna rest this stitch over to the right-hand needle, and I'm gonna flange out or flare out all my stitches and make them like little soldiers going the right way. So they're all standing up. Again, because I'm joining to go in the round, my knitting is on the outside. So here's my cast on, and here's my first row knit. So you knit your first row. Yes, I did. If I was going to was be confused. a rib, I would do knit one, purl one. So you cast on and you do your first row before and I you do, join. Before I join. And okay, the reason why, I'm sorry it was not clear, is because now I have something to work with and sure. to make sure all my stitches are going the right way. Okay, so repeat that because I think that is important. Okay, so I'm going to cast on however many stitches I need plus one. And I am going to do whatever my pattern says for row one. If okay. it's a knit one, purl one, I'm going to knit one, purl one. And I'm going to go all the way up to that last stitch and not knit it. Not knit it, gotcha. For a moment, I'm going to rest it so I can get all my stitches lined up so there's no twist. Then I'm going to slip it over to the left needle and I neglected to bring a marker over, but I can put my beginning of marker round here. You want to make sure your yarn is in the back if you're knitting or in the front, but that it's out of the way. And my first stitch now is going to be knit two together. And you dropped that. Oh, did I? Yeah. Whoops, that's why it's funny. So my first is gonna be now knit two together. And I am now joined in the round. And now you knit normal. And if you notice, if I can lay this down, they're butted together. Mm -hmm. And I can come back later and tighten that up and you'll never know where the, mm -hmm. it started. So that is on a 16 inch circular needle, how to join in the round. Okay? Yeah. Next, if you want to do magic loop. What is magic loop? Magic loop is when you take a 32 inch or bigger, I believe this is a 40 inch needle, and we are gonna split the stitches onto two sides, also in the round. 
So once again, I counted, uh, cast on however many stitches I wanted. And let's pull this back around to see what I did. And I knit, once again, all but that last stitch. Okay. So, so all my stitches, mm -hmm. once again, I added one stitch, whatever your pattern says for row one. Mm -hmm. For a second, I am going to rest that stitch on my right hand needle. Mm -hmm. Because I am coming, going to divide my stitches in half. So if you have 60, you have 30 and 30 on each side. Mm -hmm. I'm not counting this extra stitch yet. Okay. And I am going to pull a loop. So notice what I've done. Now, you do want to take care, and again, why I like doing the first row is I want to make sure I don't twist right here at this join. So because I have something to hold on to, I can lay this flat. Once again, I have my extra stitch here. So I'm going to pull both down because I am going to transfer that extra stitch that I have not knit to my other needle. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Make sure your yarn, just for ease, is on top. Transfer your stitch over. Check and make sure there's no twist. All my soldiers are down. Mm -hmm. And I am ready to do magic loop. So how do I know what I'm going to knit? If I look, my yarn is on the back needle. That means I'm going to knit on my front needle. So how do I do that? Mm -hmm. I am going to pull my back needle out and make a loop. I like to call these loops my butterfly wings. Mm -hmm. And now, once again, I am going to knit two together. And then you'll be joined. And then I will be joined. So I have my loop here. First two stitches together, and I'm going to knit. Now, when you do, and I'm going to knit all the way across real quick while I talk, um, you want to make sure, and I had a comment yesterday that um, sometimes when you knit in the round or little, you tend to knit tighter. So you want to make sure you don't... Um, knit too tight that you get off gauge or too loose that you get off gauge. And I believe I've spoken in one of the past two weeks about how important gauge is. So here I am at the end of that row. And if I just lay this down in order, if I look, this is where I want to knit next, my back needle. So what do I have to do? Two things. One, I have to push this forward and pull this one down. Now, when you have magic loop, you need to pull these last two stitches a little tighter mm -hmm. in the round. Mm -hmm. So that, and it put, could be if, it's a thicker yarn or slippery like a super wash. It might be the last two and first two. We don't want, want what's called a railroad track. 
Now you want to make sure you always, when you're not going to knit, leave your knitting like this. Don't necessarily pull it all through or you'll lose this. Okay. Now, the other way to knit the same idea as Magic Loop is to use two circular needles. Um, I like to use either uh, two separate uh, sizes, in other words, a 24 inch and a 32 inch. And when you do that, or you could use two six, uh, 16 and a 24. So let's pretend, let me take these off for a second. Because when you use two circulars and so I'm going to change to use two circulars on this. So I'm going to knit across this next row with a different needle. What you have to remember is that you're using two separate needles. And I'll explain that right now, um, which is why if I have a choice, I like magic loop because I inevitably will use the same needle and go all the way around. And suddenly I'm on a short needle going, oh, what did I just do? And I can't explain it, you know, why I did what I did. Silliness, I guess. So, so here, now I am on two separate needles. You could use, um, I don't like to mix uh, metal and wood but you could use two different colored woods if you have that, or two different cables um, on two different metal needles. Because now, if this is the next side I'm gonna knit, I have to remember that this side is only knit with this needle, and the other side is only knit with the shorter one. I find that difficult for me to remember. My brain does not like that at all. Um, so thus I use magic loop. Now, double points. Question. Yes, question. What are you making to have two rows of stitches? Um, if you're in the round, you might be doing a sleeve in the round, um, a cowl, a hat, or a full, well, a full sweater, um, unless it's, you know, a baby um, sweater, you're most likely going to be on a 24, 32 inch for a child or an adult sweater. This is, this could be the cuff of a sleeve. No, I'm not sure that's coming up. What are you making to have two rows of stitches? I'm not sure what you're asking, Sandy. She says, what are you making to have two rows of stitches? what this sample is? I think that maybe... Hmm. When you ask two rows of stitches, Sandy, are you asking why I've knit two rows here? Do I, am I doing a pattern? And that answer is no, I'm just showing a technique. Um, why you would use this technique would be for anything you're doing in the round. Does that answer it? We'll see. We'll see. So now double points. And I wanted to, again, I'm showing larger needles, but if this was a pair of socks, and this could be socks maybe on worsted weight. Um, again, I'm just going to knit off this um, and show you how 
I still start um, the same way uh, for socks. I might cast on, to me, if I was doing socks, usually I'm on a size one or two needle, 60 stitches, and the original 60 stitches will fit on um, one needle. Or I might start it on a 16 inch or 24 inch size two needle and then transfer just like I'm doing here to double points. So I'm going to knit off double points and Val while I knit can show come what we have are in two different sizes, uh, six inch and eight inch. Um, I tend to like the six or seven inch needles. That's a personal choice. I don't like the bigger ones. So if I show here, I've knit off 10 stitches, 15 stitches onto one needle. Now I'm just going to grab my next one. And again, now I'm going to have to pull a little taunt here because I don't want a ladder coming on the edges. And a ladder is because your joins get loose. And not so, the wrong word, joins, but your where the needles um, connect, yeah. so to say. Yeah. Now, I have to say, I was always, for my socks, and I'm usually on zeros or one because I'm a loose knitter, and I always uh, did magic loop, or double points, excuse me, because I like double points. Um, I, fe I feel, for me, I have more control on double points where other people... Um, Right, a lot of people do not like double points because they feel they feel wonky in their hands. They're going to lose stitches. Um, I tend to push mine into the center. Um, if it, well, um, I'll show a little technique on how to. You can use rubber bands on the needles that you're not. Um, doing, like if you're not knitting this, you can take a rubber band around here and around there so you don't lose your stitches um, as opposed to lots of little end stoppers because uh, I used to pull those off with just my hands. Now I'm going to put all of these on this needle because later next month, uh, it is an in-store class. I'm teaching socks. Um, it's my favorite pattern, basic socks from Yankee Knitter. Of course, I'm probably a Yankee, so that's why I like it. Melinda is a Connecticut designer. So if you go up on Ravelry, she has uh, some fabulous designs there. But her sock pattern is probably one of my favorite basic sock patterns to teach how to do socks from. So here I am, and I could have divided that into four, but why I like uh, Melinda's sock pattern is this would be your instep and this is your heel in the back. So she just makes it really easier. Um, again, I would always start on a, a circular needle, even going to double points. Chowgu came out with a sock set, which I did neglect to bring over here, and their cable on that sock set is, has to be the most beautiful cable I have ever had. Um, and so I am now a magic loop sock knitter. Okay, so what sock pattern is your favorite? My favorite sock pattern is by Yankee Knitter. It's located on Ravelry. Some stores, like we will have the hard copy here, but you can um, 
buy it off Ravelry. I believe it's a $6, $7 pattern, and it's called Basic Socks. And the designer is Yankee Knitter. So just put in Yankee Knitter in Ravelry, and she has about 25 different patterns. And they are patterns, they've been around, I want to say, for 25 years at least. Um, they do not go out of style. She has a Guernsey sweater, a cable sweater, my first basic sweaters that I give to people to knit. So again, I want to come back to double points for just a second. If you notice, the way I hold my double points is within my hand. Squish them into the center. Again, I'm going to pull that last stitch a little taut. I'd like to keep it on the bottom as opposed to the when I go to knit my next one. And here I am ready to knit. And I can pull that first stitch oops, taunt as well. And so I'm really not holding any other needles but the one I'm on and the one I'm going to. So in double points, they give you five because you can do a sleeve, sock, whatever, on four double points. So you could essentially have four, and you need the fifth to knit off. Or if you knit on three and you use the fourth, you have one that you can lose. <laughs> so then you still can knit with. So before I stop today, any questions on knitting in the round and how to join? Perfect. Well, I hope you enjoyed today. I hope everybody learned something. Um, all our videos now are up on YouTube, and this afternoon and tomorrow I'm going to label every video that's just by date, so you'll know what it is in the video when you go to YouTube. Otherwise, it just says knitting, stitch and post with Nancy. Um, and you don't know what I'm going to talk about, so it would be a surprise. <laughs> Have a great day. I hope you all are safe. Take care. Wear your mask. And for those who are in the West over here, um, California and, and even here in Oregon, I know we're dealing with a lot of fires right now. Um, and structural loss as well as our, our forests. I wish everybody well there and safety. And have a great day and see you all soon. Enjoy the cooler weather. Bye.